Hello Tubes and Grooves and welcome to this episode of Take the Fear Out of the Gear with me Jason Bangers and me Mr Chumley Warner and today we're going to take a little look at the Elisus HR16 Hop on board <coughs> Apart from the Dr Rhythm this is my favourite drum machine of all time so I, and I'll tell you for why because the SR16, I done 17 years in deep joy the duo with this thing, and I had to clip a light on the back, a little battery powered light, so we could see the patterns. Right, okay. Because this is the newer version of this, right? Now, this is ancient, and yet, what has this thing got that they ain't got? Backlight display. A backlight display. I mean, Elisa, what was she thinking? The. SR16 is a well-known drum machine, right? Every, when they come yeah, out, yeah. everybody wanted them, everyone bought them. But honestly, this thing's built like a tank, and I love it. I love the presentation of it. Because I think they had also a sequencer that went alongside it and looks almost the same, doesn't it? I yeah, think. it was called the Alesis uh, MMT8, which mm. was like an 8-track MIDI sequencer. And I think you'll find as well, it's quite simple to you, so do you want to give us some demos, mate? I mean, for a start, you can play it by hand, yeah? Yeah, well, you're, you're, you're the drummer, well, man. It's been a give, while. Give us some drums. We have got touch sensitivity yeah, there. Yeah, velocity sensitive. And I guess for you can record, yeah. Yeah, well, we tried it earlier, and we we haven't looked at the manual or anything. So, uh, if you want to add something, I think we were on. If we go back to beat number one, it was just a straight thing. Will it quantize automatically? Do you know? I think so. Yeah. All you do okay. uh, is like earlier, just to press, hold down record, press play. All that said and done, it's now time for. It's that time. Chummy stats. You should probably get this one right. Statman. Statman. When do you reckon these came out, roughly? Oh, but I know when I bought that. I bought that about 92. Yeah, sounds so about right. This must have been about 88, I'm going to say. Yeah, they, they produced uh, 1987, 98. 1988. Bangers got one right for a change. And whilst we're on years, they they produced a black version, so it looks the same but in black. Oh, didn't uh, know that. And they had different sounds in, and that was produced in 1989. Okay. So, uh, you know, that's that's a great, great, great. How many greats is that? That makes it greater than great. Great, great collectible. Awesome. The black ones, you don't see many of those. No, no, for sure. So what have we got then? Well, we ought to say if I lift this up, look. Oh wow! If, if you need a manual, it's right there. How cool is that? Well, you're never going to lose that, are you? No, so that's that's cool. So what have we got then? I didn't know that was under there. So this this is one of Elise's first drum machines. It's got 49 sounds in there. It's really easy to go through the sounds. You can basically just hit the voice button, and it's it's child's play. So that's, that's that's great, and you can tune all the sounds as well. What have you got then? So the it's got a built-in sequencer, so you can have a hundred songs, a hundred patterns, uh, and and this was like the first venture into sixteen-bit drum samples, because mm. all all the drum machines before that were either analog or eight-bit, so they were sort of low low-fi drum machines. I'm guessing that's where the sixteen comes from, is it? Because it's sixteen-bit HR sixteen, SR sixteen. I guess so. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What else we got then? Let's have a look. There's not a lot to say about it. Uh, it was used by, apparently, let's have a look, Orbital and the Stereo MCs. And the most interesting thing about this, because it's got a 
some people have opened them up and it's got EPROMs inside with the sounds on. Mm. And you can take the EPROMs out and put different sounds in. Oh, really? And that's what people have been messing around with. So you could, right. if you've got the EPROMs for the HR16B, you could put those sounds in this machine or any other sounds. So that's, that's, that's you know, what people have been doing, modifying and, and stuff like that. But it's reversible because you can put the originals back in. Because uh, with the SR16, I, I don't think you can load any new sounds in. You, well, you might be able, but not that I'm aware of. No, I, I don't think so, no. It's However, got, it's got a lot more sounds than yeah, this one has. has. Yeah, 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 definitely. The HR16 is a winner. Chicken dinner, lovely jubbly. Should we have a quick look at the back? Yeah, so you've got four outputs. Uh, tape in and out is for saving patterns and songs. Ah, oh, cool. You can save them to cassette. You've got your start, stop, MIDI, and there's your power, and you're no, off. No foot switches? Oh, yeah, start, stop, stop. Okay. Start, stop, foot switch. So oh, you that's, could that's use that's it. Useful. But there you go. That's the HR16, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Take the Fear Out of Gear. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. We really, really, really appreciate your company and joining us and watching our videos. So we hope you enjoy the HR16. Not really too much other than just showing you one. We'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Bye from me, Jason Bangers. And bye from me, Mr. Chumley Warner. <laughs>